Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about romances with no third act breakups. I love romances with no third act breakups. Once you tell me there, there, there's no third act breakup, um, I, I will probably pick it up. I sometimes feel like authors feel like they need to have a breakup in their romance book. I don't think so. I don't feel like it flows organically in some books. Don't get me wrong. I think that there are romance books out there that work well with having a breakup in the book. I just prefer when there's not. <laughs> I love when the couple talks and works out their relationship instead of making this big breakup scene. Anyway, um, here are 10 romances with no third act breakup that I love. I've been talking about this book a lot, but The Butterfly Project by Emma Scott has no third act breakup. Um, this is the romance between Zelda and Beckett. Sorry, I always forget his name. Um, but anyway, this is set in New York. Zelda recently moved to New York to try and get her graphic novel published. Graphic novel published. Goodness, that was hard for me to say. Um, and she ends up meeting Beckett at the restaurant he works at and she ends up learning that he is short a few hundred dollars for rent. Zelda comes up with the fantastic idea of like moving in with him in order to like pay him for the difference in rent. She's having like some difficulties with finding a place to live in New York to a point where she was debating like just moving back to her small town because like she can't find a good safe place to live. Um, so when she hears Beckett needs some more money, she's like, here you go, here's my offer. And he agrees and they end up moving in together in his very small shoebox of an apartment. <laughs> Beckett is an ex-con. When you read the book, you figure out why Beckett is an ex-con. So he kind of also feels self-conscious about his past and Zelda's dealing with her own things as well with um, the grief of losing her sister. She's still dealing with that. Her sister was kidnapped and um, Zelda thinks that it's her fault that her sister ended up dying. Like any Emma Scott book, this book is very emotional, but no third act breakup. Love it. Kiss My Cupcake by Helene Hunting was my first five-star read of the year. I loved this. This is a rivaling businesses romance. Blair and Ronan own rivaling businesses next door to each other. She owns the Cupcake Cocktail Place. Um, it's very cutesy and pink and rainbow unicorn basically. And uh, Ronan owns the place next door, which is a bar that he is remodeling to be like more contemporary. It was her, his grandfather's bar, but he's like added axe throwing and is more of like a sport bar vibe um, to make the bar more money for his grandfather. They do not get off on the right foot. They do not like each other, don't like each other's businesses. Um, they even play pranks on each other to ruin, not actually ruin, but like to set back their progress with reopening their businesses. But then they end up falling in love with each other and their respective businesses. It is so cute, it is so cute. There is a point in here when you think they're gonna break up, but they don't, they don't. Like the heroine starts spiraling about like, oh, is the hero doing this and this and this and this. Uh, but then like, he like sits her down and is like, this is what happens. Please stop spiraling. Like he sits down with her and has a conversation. Like. I, I, I love that. I want that. I want that. Anyway, um, I love this Enemies to Lovers Romance. It was so funny and fun. And oh my gosh, the baking element in here made my heart just soar. Hannah Bottom Young is the queen of writing romances with no third act breakups. And that's maybe why she's like my new favorite author of all time. So Out on a Limb and Next to You are two I want to highlight for this video. Out on a Limb is my favorite book of the year. Wynn and Bo end up having a one night stand on Halloween. Wynn ends up finding out she's pregnant and she ends up moving in with Bo in his home. And it's very much a friends to lovers romance, even though they did have that one night stand situation. But yeah, it's friends to lovers. I love this one so much. And there's a reason why this book is my favorite. <laughs> um, and I love how there's not even a glimpse, even a glimpse, even a conflict between the two of them to make you think that they're going to break up in any way, shape or form. Like they are in this situation in like when their baby's lives together and they're going to be together regardless of what happens to them. Next of kin, however, there is like a discussion fight, if you will, between the two characters where you think there could be a breakup, but there isn't, don't worry. Uh, but this is about Warren and Chloe. They both want custody of their siblings. So Chloe's birth mom just gave birth to like an infant baby, right? Um, and she wants custody and to like take care of her baby sister because her mother is unfit to do so. Um, and Warren wants to get custody of his teenage brother who is deaf, but they both have certain things in their lives that's kind of like prohibiting them from getting full custody um, because Chloe is not in the best financial situation, but then Warren doesn't have the best place to live. 
but Chloe does and Warren is financially stable. So they move in together. He moves into her place and they help each other out. They don't get off on the right foot. They don't really get along at first. Um, Warren is very much a grumpy grump, if you will. Um, but this forced proximity situation and the fact that they're having to take care of their siblings like forces them to communicate and get to know one another finally. <laughs> there is a conflict in this book where you think like, oh my gosh, are they going to? But they don't, so don't worry. If you want a small town romance, Juniper Hill by Daphne Perry was a great one that I read. My friends Zay and Victoria recommended this book for me before I got to Book Bonanza. And I'm so glad that they had me read this before I went. This was such a great read. This is a single mom romance. Memphis is our heroine and she ends up moving to the small town of Quincy with her few month old, six month old maybe, or even younger baby Drake. She moved to Quincy in hopes of starting a better life for her and her son. She's kind of like also running away from her previous life. She wants a fresh start, doesn't want anything to do with her past life or where she came from. Memphis ends up getting a job over at the Eloise Inn in this small town and the manager of the place ends up finding a place for her to uh, like stay, live. And the place is over her brother's garage. It's like apartment on her brother's property above the garage that no one's staying in right now. Um, and he isn't very happy about this situation. His name is Knox and he is Mr. Grumpy Pants at first. Um, but then one night, like Drake is up screaming, crying. The baby has colic and he goes and knocks on her door and is basically like, give the baby to me. Maybe he just needs a new set of arms to sleep in. And like Memphis realizes like Knox is the only one able to calm her baby down. That's all I want to say for this one, but I really adored this book, especially like the single mom aspect in here. If you're wanting a more dark romance, I have Scarred by Emily McIntyre. This is actually a Lion King retelling, which I need more of those in my life. Like give them to me. Prince Tristan is our scar, if you will. And this is his romance with Sarah Beatro. Sarah is destined to marry um, Tristan's brother, Michael. Michael rules their kingdom and Tristan like hates his brother, like absolutely hates him, thinks that he is a horrible king. All Tristan wants is to overthrow his brother, to get him off of the throne, um, without his brother actually knowing that. Um, but then when he meets Lady Beatro, his priorities definitely shift. His thoughts end up being occupied by Sarah instead of like overthrowing his brother and he's like enraged with her because of it. He's like, how come? I'm like thinking about her instead of overthrowing my brother all the time. Like I have things I have to do, goals I have to meet. And this woman is like occupying my every waking thought instead. There's more to this book. You have a very villainous character falling in love with Sarah. Um, so it does get dark at times. There's trigger warnings in here for death, substance abuse, torture, SA, violence, blood, and suicide. So just like be aware of that before going in. But if you want like a fun, dark romance retelling, look no further. Burned Dreams by Neva Altaj is her most recent book in her Perfectly Imperfect Mafia Romance series. This is actually book number seven. I can't believe she's written seven of these books. Like, I love that. I wonder how much she's gonna write. I feel like she could write like 50 of them. So there is no third act breakup in this book and um, it's because the, um, the romance between the two of these characters is very much forbidden. Ravenna is married to a man she hates who abuses her all the time. She's scared of her husband, gets abused by him, and Alessandro is hired to be Ravenna's bodyguard by her husband. He basically doesn't want Ravenna to be touched, looked at by any other man. He actually thinks that Alessandro is gay and that's why he hires him, but he's not. And Alessandro wants to make Ravenna's husband pay because he knows that that man is responsible for his wife who died six years ago. So in revenge, he's gonna kill his wife. So he's gonna kill Ravenna, um, but then he ends up being her bodyguard and getting to know her and realizing that she is not in this marriage willingly and that she is terrified for her life and his priorities definitely shift. They don't break up because they're like fighting for each other's lives and keeping their relationship a secret and making sure that her husband never finds out about them. Bring Me In by Kayla Grossi also does not have a third act breakup. I've talked about this book a lot so I'll like speed through this um, but this is a cowboy romance. Our heroine moves back to a very small town five years after her brother died. Her mother recently got injured and she needs help around the ranch and farm. So she comes back to help out. She then goes to the country dancing bar one night after coming back and ends up bumping into her um, brother's best friend and he works there and uh, things don't really get off on the right foot between the two of them. The hero actually had a huge crush on the heroine uh, growing up, even though she's older than him. And he's gonna try everything possible to make her 
his. And lastly, if you want like some paranormal or not par yeah, paranormal monster alien romances, first one I have is Tentacles and Triathlons by Ashley Bennett. This is an MM romance. Um, Reese in here is our human and he doesn't really love monsters. He has some past trauma with monsters and he's kind of scared of them. But then his sister, Tegan, we met her in the first book in this series, ends up getting engaged to a monster creature, a wolf creature. And he's kind of like thrust into this world with monsters. Cause in this series, monsters and humans kind of like live together in harmony. <laughs> They're at the like engagement party for his sister. He ends up meeting Cyrus, who is a kraken, and he is very attracted to him. <laughs> Reese doesn't know it yet, but uh, Cyrus knows that Reese is his faded mate right off the bat, but he can tell that he has a little bit of an inversion to monsters, who's gonna take things like very slow, even though that he knows that that's his faded mate. Um, and then Reese asks for Cyrus's help in swimming. He's not the best swimmer and he really wants to compete in a triathlon, and so he asks, Cyrus to help him train at uh, the Leviathan Fitness Center um, and they get some hot and heavy times in the pool. It's really good. Okay, <laughs> take my word for it. Um, and then the other one that I have is Artek by Honey Phillips. This is the first book in her Seven Brides for Seven Alien Brothers series. The heroine of this book um, lives on an ice snow planet. There she ends up meeting the um, like commander of the seven brothers in arms who live on a ranch close by to the human village. They're aliens. He goes into the general store that her dad runs that she works at quite a few times and he realizes like he likes her and he needs a wife. So he very innocently, very sweetly goes up to her and is like, I know we don't know each other well, but um, do you wanna marry me? And she's like, you know what? I don't wanna be a general store's daughter for the rest of my life. And I want to venture, I wanna do new things. So yes, I will marry you. I want a change in pace basically. And so without really knowing her husband very well, she marries him. Um, so there's no third next break up in here. They're married um, and it's a really cute start to a fun alien romance series. Anyways, they have it to those are 10 romances with no third act breakups in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me. What emoji are we going to do today? Um, let's do the smiley face with the cowboy hat. That one's a cute one. <laughs> Anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.